Uh, thank you, Honorable Minister. Right Honorable Deputy Prime Minister, the Minister for Agriculture, Animals and Fisheries, <coughs> the Deputy Governor who has gone, uh, Chief Executive Officers, Directors, Commissioners, ladies and gentlemen. Right Honorable Deputy Prime Minister, I am honored to welcome you to this meeting on Akuju financing and investment in Uganda as we strengthen the Akuju sector. You are aware, sir, <coughs> that my office is charged with the responsibility of monitoring the implementation of key government programs, projects, and policies. You will agree with me that Akuja is at the center of our country's economy. In the response of this mandate, sir, we found that the potential of culture had not been fully explored, partly because of financing in the sector. We decided to adopt a multi-sectoral approach to this issue by soliciting ideas from all stakeholders. We know that the private sector is very necessary if we are to overcome this challenge. We therefore collaborated with the Uganda Business Alliance, uh, who, which is represented by my mentor, Madam Vicky Sektoriko, uh, <coughs> who have been doing some good work in this uh, area. UAA, to this end, was to collaborate and mobilize the private sector and bring them on board, uh, <coughs> which they have done well. So, on the 19th of July this year, my office, in collaboration with uh, Uganda, our business alliance had a high-level breakfast meeting to discuss the coach financing. The meeting was held under the theme making finance work for agriculture and so to bring together the most prominent decision makers in Uganda's agribusiness and financial sector then. Some of the participants included the Minister of Finance, the Minister of Agriculture, the Deputy Chair of the NPA, the country head director of FAO and executive directors of various banks. The meeting had three main objectives. One was to enable the government to engage, in the, to engage with the key stakeholders that are directly involved in financing agriculture in Uganda and seek their counsel on how best to unlock financial flows in the agriculture sector. Two, to build consensus around an action plan leading to the establishment of an incentive-based risk-sharing agricultural financing mechanism in the country, and three, to obtain knowledge that may be used by stakeholders to evolve agricultural finance policies, product services, and institutional arrangements that can be, that can steer, guide, and influence the financial sector towards meeting the financial needs of the agricultural sector in Uganda. At that meeting, sir, a number of recommendations were made. These are going to be uh, a subject of our discussion and they will be presented after my presentation. And the, some of them, uh, the observations which were made in, in include the need to develop a roadmap for financing the culture in Uganda. The need to strengthen the agriculture owned financing institutions and the creation of an agricultural bank. The need to support the development of an agricultural finance policy. The need to profile all farmers in Uganda, among others. The need to identify and strengthen at least five priority agricultural community value chains that the government can best promote. The need to support and strengthen agricultural extension services. And the need to support and strengthen farmer groups associations and cooperatives, among others. The above recommendations were made in view to guide policymakers and the key stakeholders that are directly involved in agricultural financing to focus resources on establishing financing mechanism that will enable all market participants to thrive. It was further decided that these recommendations be subjected to a wider forum to seek the input of other stakeholders. 
At this meeting, sir, it was agreed that we hold a two-day agricultural financing meeting, which is today, bring together a wider selection of stakeholders to validate the recommendations from the earlier meeting. This meeting, therefore, is a follow-up to the breakfast meeting we had. And it's my prayer and that at the end of this meeting, we select the five major value chains which we shall recommend to government to come to an agro position. All these efforts should as well contribute towards meeting our commitments under the Comprehensive Africa Agriculture Development Program, CADIP, and the Malabo Goals. Finally, I want to once again thank all of you for coming. And uh, at this juncture, can I invite Mr. Edward before? Edward, make a, a cup of what we discussed in the last breakfast meeting and uh, <coughs> the recommendation uh, thereafter. And the only Mr. Nasson, I would have, I request you to invite okay. the Prime Minister to make his remarks. The doctor, allow me to make a slight. Adjustment. Adjustment. I'm sorry about this. Right uh, Honorable uh, Deputy Prime Minister has requested to deliver his, deliver the speech of the Prime Minister uh, at this moment because he's also going to attend uh, to some other, you know, attend some other meeting from here. So I'm sorry about this, but allow me to invite Dr. Ajayin Moses Ali to give the speech of the Prime Minister. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. First of all, I'm not going to address you from there. Uh, it's convenient that I address you from here. Uh, secondly, Indeed, I missed uh, the uh, introduction to the doctor part, which you did, and we're not going to ask you to do again because it will really take to a long time. We shall be able to know each other in future, although I know some of you. Uh, I'm being asked by the Prime Minister to deliver his speech, and uh, allow me to do so, so that uh, we follow other programs. The Honorable Minister of the Presidency, the Minister of State for Economic Monitoring in the Office of the President, the Minister of Trade, Industry and uh, Cooperatives, the Minister of Agriculture, Animal Industry and Fisheries, Members of Parliament present here, Permanent Secretaries, Chief Executive Officers, Directors and Commissioners, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen. It's my singular honor to be here with you today to add to my voice and support the concerted efforts in organizing and supporting this high-level meeting on agricultural financing in Uganda, whose theme is making finance work for agriculture. I'm sure and uh, confident that we all share the common objectives of strengthening agricultural financing in our country. Agriculture plays a crucial role in the economy of both developed and the developing countries and provides the main source of food, income and employment to their rural populations of the developing countries. It has become increasingly evident in the last decades that the conception of both 
economists and uh, policy market makers regarding the role of agriculture in economic development has undergone an important evolution. Roughly one quarter of the Earth's terrestrial surface is now under cultivation with more than with more land cultivated uh, cal converted to crop production than in the previous 150 years in many regions including Europe North America Australia and uh, recently Brazil China and India human humanity Indian humanity has also become skillful at raising yields through using inputs like fertilizers, pesticides, and uh, organic manures. Food and uh, nutrition security is a bigger challenge than ever with a global population expected to reach 9.6 billion people by 2050. World food schemes, systems, will have to increase in efficiency and uh, productivity to ensure that people have access to the food they need in a quantity and quality. Uganda government has a responsibility to address the issue of food and nutritional security. And it is our view that agricultural financing can unlock Uganda's agricultural potentials. Agriculture remaining, remain, remains a major source of income and wealth creation in Uganda and uh, accordingly, the need to expand agricultural finance has been identified as one of the key enablers in achieving our Vision 2040. While there are no, while there are, while there are a number of uh, critical bottlenecks constraining the growth of a highly productive and uh, prosperous agriculture sector in Uganda, finance is a cross-cutting catalyst for the much-needed transformation in the sector. It is of great interest to me, therefore, that the, the key stakeholders are agricultural financing back the agenda to develop the sector. Recognizing the importance of agriculture to the economies of its member states and the many challenges faced in reducing poverty and enhancing food security on, on the continent, the, uh, the African Union together with the new partnership for Africans, Africa Development, NEPAD, created an agricultural initiative called the Comprehensive African Agriculture Development Program in 2003. In 2003, the main goal of the Comprehensive Agricultural, African Agricultural Development Program is to help African countries reach a high path, higher path of economic growth through agriculture-led development. That eliminates hunger, reduces poverty, and, above, and food insecurity, and enables expansion of exports. Around the same time, uh, African Union and uh, NEPAD developed another 
continent initi continental initiative, the African Peer Review Mechanism to address agriculture issues. The implementation of both of these initiatives at the country level has been underway for several years now, although to varying degrees in different uh, countries. Such initiatives are very relevant in promoting wide, uh, wide government programs. Agriculture financing would assist in affording the implementation of these programs. The program in partnership with many, with many around this room has been proactive in implementing mechanisms such as guarantees, trade finance, among other financial instru instruments. However, despite these operations and products have not been nationalized to rationalize, to create an effective financial value chain to deliver agricultural uh, finance to all segments of agricultural value chains at scale, at that scale. We are aiming to go further, but this calls for unprecedented collaboration among stakeholders as well as more initiative and market-based approaches to sustainably reach a large number of value chain sector. Our goal to ensure that the agricultural sector continues to play a key role in uh, satisfying world food and uh, nutritional security by enhancing the overall comprehensiveness of our agricultural sector. We can achieve this by enabling economic operator operators to rely on key consistency so they can con confidently undertake long-term investment and take and the advantage of global demand increases. It is for reasons that two key policy count pronouncements were made in this year's budget speech. We are committed to developing an agricultural finance policy and an agricultural insurance policy in the current financial year. In developing these policies, we will listen closely to all agricultural stakeholders as they deliver feedback on the process. You, the main players, are best placed to let policymakers know what works well and what could work better. Once agreed, government will seek to mobilize support at all levels to improve access to finance for to access to finance for all market actors. We must take every possible step to allow our farmers achieve their full business and job creating potential by designing frameworks that emphasize agriculture financing over funding at the, uh, of the agricultural sector. This should see a significant increase in the financial fire power for actors in, in the agricultural sector in terms of investment growth and the job creation. After a thorough review of the recommendations from the high-level agricultural financing breakfast meeting that was 
co-hosted by the Minister of Economic Monitoring in the Office of the President on the 19th of July 2016, and the discussions that you have had today, I note that financing alone will not bring about the agricultural revolution, revolution that we all need. Rather, it will take a multiplicity of invest in interventions involving inputs, technology, markets, value chain uh, development, clustering, land reforms, etc. I have noted the desire by the Uganda Agri, Agri Business Alliance to form an agricultural investment facilitation platform, which will be the springboard in achieving the above revolution. This proposal is a, pro, is, is a noble one under the Department of uh, Economic Monitoring and uh, Policy Coordination in my office, together with the Directorate for Economic Monitoring, will further discuss the modalities for its functionality. This platform, once established, will provide oversight and an independent review of the activities of the different sector actors. The Uganda Agribusiness Alliance will host the Secretariat at its offices in Kampala, thereby providing a professional and a institutional neutral coordinating body in the private sector and a factor and a focal point for planning, coordinating and uh, targeting agricultural development programs and investments. Uganda Agri Agri Agribusiness Alliance, working with the different uh, subcommittees, must also ensure that the private sector, the civil society, research and the development partners are fully represented and their view pro properly captured and considered, captured and considered. My office will work with the office of the, Prime, of the president, Uganda Agricultural Alliance, a business alliance, and the responsible ministers to celebrate the, co the recommendations from the meetings and the way forward. I must conclude by restating my pleasure to once again welcome you to this meeting that is bringing together key agricultural finance actors to agree on how best to scale up financing for the sector. I thank you for the attention. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Right Honorable Sir. And uh, considering uh, your busy schedule, uh, allow me to uh, once again uh, say that your paper is well received by the members here, and we want to uh, request you, sir, to leave at your <laughs> leisure, sir. Thank you very much. Right, Honorable. Five minutes for reactions to Dr. Kisamba Mugarwa's paper, if any, or contributions. It was an informative paper. With the, uh, with the, a lot of uh, uh, work.
work that had been done by the many heads that came up with the PMA. Uh, Dr. Sam Muraz will wait for, uh, for, for reactions. If you have uh, in that paper what you think is still applicable today, especially in regard to what we are discussing here, agricultural financing, can you point out what is relevant in that paper in, today, in our agenda today? Yeah, I had to ring Victoria as to whether, because when I read your report, it was focusing on financing. And yet this was a broad thing about plan for modernization of agriculture as to where. I'm not a historian and I'm not a pathologist. <laughs> but I was working on postmortem. Uh, what I think, there is still a problem with the financing of agriculture. Um, according to plan for modernization of agriculture, you need a comprehensive approach. Finance, as the governor put it, finance is not the only answer, but farming at any, level, at any one level is a business, and therefore business, you must be, take prudent uh, ideas and ensure that you invest. And there is no investor at any level who doesn't, who can go without credit. So access to credit is important at, uh, at individual level. But you know, most people, when they are talking about financing, uh, they are talking about financing the ministry. And that's why there is a big debate as to whether your ministry, and they say agriculture is underfunded, is ministry is underfunded. Uh, don't belong to that school of thought. If your, your ministry could concentrate on policy formulation, standards, quality assurance, guidance, techno te te technology transfer, and research, I feel there is good will and there is sufficient money. But uh, and you, we, for farm inputs, we could have a subsidy, but smart. There are already studies in this world and practices where agriculture has been subsidized without undermining uh, the, the system. I always give one example that in my village, I'm the only one who can buy a box of bus soap. I know some of you have machine, washing machines. You don't buy these bus soap. Some of us are still hand washing. We use bus soap. But in my village, each one has a piece of soap. But the government is not the one distributing that soap. It is distributed by the private sector. And we have access to it. So I believe that through the private sector, we can still distribute the farm inputs as long as your ministry ensures quality. And by the time they reach us in Bamunanika, there will be in small amounts which are affordable, five kilograms, two kilograms of fertilizer and whatnot. So uh, I don't like to give my opinions. But this is plan for modernization, okay? They are there. I can quote even pages. And he's available in his office. By the time I left your office, I hope you didn't change it. There were over 200 books reserved for ministers. <laughs> but it's a long time ago. So uh, financing is important as a pillar of uh, agriculture. But farming, it cannot be solved through only financing. But farming as a business, you need to have access to credit. But also, government has to invest more in those public goods. 
like research extension and uh, quality assurance, policy formulation, and ensure that so that you save us from buying fake adulterated fertilizers and uh, seeds. I beg to submit. Thank you very much, Dr. Kisamongula. Can we give him? Thank you. Uh, uh, my brother, Your Excellency, uh, uh, has a point to make. Uh, Philip Woodry, a former ambassador, former DC, former member of parliament, former. Please, thank you very much. Th thank you, thank you, Honorable Minister. Uh, I think today is very nice for us because we have about uh, 40 years of ministers here of agriculture. So, <laughs> so I, I, I think you can tell us. Because, <laughs> first of all, you, 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 Uganda is not an oil exporting country, neither is it a mineral country. Uh, therefore, I think it is an agricultural country, or oh, it should be. Is it? Or is it not? Yes, it is. So, if it is, then how can there be no finance? of agriculture or all other activities, as Honorable uh, Mugero, uh, Mugero is saying, in the agriculture sector. Uh, uh, I have not finished. I am just uh, building my point. I say this because if it is really an agricultural country, my friends, the bankers cannot say agriculture is risky because it is agriculture financing all these things. Even the banks are because of agriculture. In fact, there is a problem of nomenclature. When the banks are able to finance breweries, when 80% strength of breweries is agricultural raw material, it makes a little bit of a problem for me to understand. But yet they say agriculture is not financeable, so there is a problem. And of all countries, Uganda, which is the most endowed, now, what would happen to other countries? And if I may ask, how did the other countries finance the agriculture anyway, besides the fact of technology and other matters managing it? Because if we don't get this clear, then there is a problem. Because I don't think with these oil prices going up and down, it may be viable to call Uganda an agriculture. So I think we're going to be back to agriculture and we better pay attention to it. But what beats me is why is it that the British were able to bring my grandfather, who did not even have a mobile phone, to be able to grow cotton, and honorable ministers, your grandfathers, to grow coffee, and today we are suffering that there is a problem in agriculture with, is it finance or is it what? And, and, and then we have a problem. Now, which I want to emphasize, I've been emphasizing it in all, 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 the, all the places I've been to. A country like Uganda calling it agricultural, it has only 5,000 tractors, but has 800,000 cars, has 10 million telephones, but not 1 million ox plows. We drink more beer than milk, the budget. More Coca-Cola than the medicines we can afford our children. And yet, it is financed by agriculture. There is a fundamental problem. The weather is OK. The soil, OK. OK. There is labor. And there is a market. Even Kenya today wants $1 million of rice every day. The market is there. But we are not doing it. So while I agree, yes, finance is one of the major problems. And we all know others are. But are we not sure that there is a, a problem? behind these problems. Uh, the 30 years of history should give us a small thing, then we can go to other details. Honorable. And why, therefore, did you do PMA, which was different from the successful British? Because in 1960s, we were doing three to four million bags of, of coffee. And today, we are still doing three million bags. We are 40 million. At that time, we were six. There's a problem, sir, with all this English. Sorry. Uh, Honourable Minister, I don't like to indulge me in my personal opinions on this subject. I'm a professor of rural economy, 
I'm a farmer. I'm a chairman of the National Planning Authority. Uh, I know what is happening and what is going on. If you want an intellectual or scientific discussion, then you find another forum. I would have been part of this forum, but I chose not to be. I sent my deputy, he's, he's full time on this forum, but he's only leave that he's not here. I've been dragged here <laughs> just to give you what it was. And I don't like to involve into a debate which may look as personal. This is not a university. Let us go to McKay University or whichever university. We talk science and we talk things. But according to plan for modernization of our culture, for which I came to present, <laughs> financing, plan for modernization of our culture, recognized the presence of a big chunk of subsistence farming, which required government direct financing in terms of extension, in terms of inputs, and whatever. But it was designed in such a way that public funding will gradually be reduced while the private sector financing is increasing as agriculture is becoming commercialized, market oriented. Let me tell you, it is not in PMA. Do you know now that people who are involved in livestock farming, no matter which part of this country where they are in Uganda, they are demand driven, that they hire their services, that you can't call a vet and you are, you are not ready to pay for the drugs. It is only the crop system, which is still being dragged. And it is a mindset, creating a dependence syndrome. So please, uh, how other countries are financed? Re recently I was in Germany, Berlin. Nani of in Berlin, it is the capital now, but they have a rural area, what you, they think is a rural, with farmers. No, no farmer there is not a graduate, almost. They all know the agronomic, but they still demand services which they hire. Because in Germany, in that, they subsidize the agriculture. To, to, to you to have access to that agriculture, you must keep data and your books that you need a profession to help you in order to claim that subsidy. So what I'm trying to say, along the value chain and along the transformation of, our, of the economy, <coughs> you get market-oriented farmers who can demand and pay for the what? For the services. Finally, and this is economics, agriculture is tricky. It needs more investment now because you have 68% of the farmers who are not market-oriented, but at the same time, its contribution to GDP and household incomes, it will continue to decline and employment, it will continue declining. And you have chosen in NDP2, agriculture, along the value chain, where it will create jobs in terms of transport, in terms of uh, sorting, grading, packaging, in terms of processing, in, in terms of whatever, not in primary production. As we get proper, if 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 it puts more and more money on research, and we get good seeds, 
and he puts more money where private sector cannot invest in fertilizer and use of management of soil and management of gardens and we get increased productivity and he assures them the market of whatever we produce you will get less and less people in our culture because you will get the Xamam Gerwas who are producing on my farm and producing what the whole sub county produces in terms of Matoki here in Bremes. So you need how many Xambas to feed this country. Others will be siphoned out. People are caught up in agriculture, not because actually they are dying of being in agriculture, because that's what is there. But then we shall get efficient agriculture farmers to remain there who are committed. And those who are committed, they are getting a good yield. Uganda, but I don't think that Uganda, you know. Those who are really committed and they are really doing the, the, the farmers. Others are very mabrimi, very marima, basubula subula, bawasa wasa. Can you allow me to leave, please? Thank you, thank yes. you, Doctor. I think we can allow you to leave. We shall engage uh, in another debate. But you could listen to one of the uh, bankers, uh, if there is any, in the view. Yes, uh, one of them. Thank you. <laughs> this is Robinson. <laughs> this is Richard Wangwe. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I'm John Magney from Opportunity this International. Um, I'm going to give you the experience that we uh, have had over the last eight years of providing uh, rural finance to smallholder farmers across multiple countries. Um, the, uh, uh, our, ch our challenge and our, our objective was to deliver uh, finance to smallholder farmers. And I think the first the first sort of takeaway we have from our experiences is that there is no doubt about it that the prerequisite for there to be agricultural finance into the rural sector has got to be the technical support and training. For the last 30 years, for the last 40 years, uh, my experience in Uganda is that we have had project after project after project delivering technical support to farmers. But the challenge for that is that they have been project-based. What we actually have to do is we have to create village-based extension staff at a ratio, and I'm going to pluck a figure out of the air, but the, the ratio I see that would work for Uganda would be an extension officer for, for every uh, 250 uh, farming households, and that that extension officer needs to be a a member of that community, but today let's equip him with the technology, uh, let's equip him with the tools so that he can draw upon all of the research, all of the development, all of the information that is available from all of the sectors uh, supporting agriculture, and that he is available to farmers to provide them uh, training in good agricultural practices and support as and when they need it, not just for a single crop or a single value chain, but for multiple uh, enterprises. The, the second thing I would say is that, is that um, it is where farmers are organized. Now, in Uganda, uh, the cooperative system uh, broke down during, this, during the 70s and 80s, and it has not been replaced with, with well-structured, well-organized farmers' organizations. Um, financial institutions cannot lend money to individual smallholder farmers. They need to lend it into a, into a structured uh, 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 group of farmers. We require that for the security of, uh, of our lending, and we require it because it is not just production that we're targeting. We're also targeting access to market and consolidation of, uh, of farmers' crops. Um, I mentioned to Vicky before uh, we started this meeting this morning that out of the seven countries where we are providing finance, Uganda is one of the most challenging. We have seen far more success in other countries. I think the only country which uh, has not performed uh, is, is below uh, Uganda is probably Mozambique with all of its problems. 
but in the other countries we are seeing the beginnings of well-organized, well-structured farmers who are receiving consistent finance from us as an institution, and we are seeing them increase their production and productivity. And to give you an idea where we're starting from, uh, we have just surveyed uh, our coffee farmers uh, that we are working with in Uganda. And this was the statistic. And this statistic is, is common to all of our countries. Their level of productivity is about 20% of what their natural resources should be. If we look at the amount of land they have, we look at the enterprises they're involved, involved in, they are getting about 20% of productivity. And that is due to, well, in the case of coffee, we've got old trees, we've got very poor uh, management of their coffee, uh, a lack of use of uh, good practices and, and fertilizers, a lack of pest and disease control. Now, they should be achieving, the, 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 the statistic that we have is about 600 grams per tree per, per, uh, per tree per year of coffee. Under all good practices, it should be three or four kilos per tree per year. And we are really challenged to get the good technical support to those farmers and to provide them the right level of finance to get them up to that level. But I think the first thing we've got to do is we definitely got to get our extension system sorted out to a point where farmers are actually receiving quality, real-time support. If we can do that, I think that will be a prerequisite. The second thing is, is that uh, I believe there are about 18 financial institutions who are currently delivering finance in Uganda to smallholder farmers. Uh, we have to build up the capacity within those organizations. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, I think uh, some of that will come out of the uh, agricultural finance platform results. But I genuinely believe we actually have to get our act together and look at how we are going to bring farmers up. I agree with the statistics that 70% uh, of farmers are uh, uh, subsistence, but the reason why they're subsistence is they are operating at this 20% capacity, and we've got to get them up. I think I'll stop there. Honourable Minister, if I could comment on that. Literature is available. There is small, small, small scale farmers or small holders. In order to have access to technology and services, they must be organized. And through organization, they get to become organized from a felt need. The principles of co cooperatives was a felt need. The farmer himself feels that he needs to associate. But if you start organizing farmers and the expectations come that because you are arriving with a package or something, then those are not sustainable. But sir, allow me to leave. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Samba. Uh, <laughs> Uh, allow me to. Uh, to thank Dr. Kisamba very much for, for your input, sir, plus what you have left behind. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> allow me to welcome uh, Honorable Esther Bayo. The Minister for Presidency, Madam Minister, you're most welcome. Uh, and uh, with those uh, uh, words that ended uh, Dr. Xamba's uh, uh, input, allow me to thank you very much for today, for the morning session. And I want to request you to uh, have a cup of coffee within 15 minutes then we'll come back here for the next session I thank you very much and uh, uh.